Hey folks, it's Dave. Welcome back to the channel. Sorry, it's been a little while since my last video, but there is a very exciting topic I wanted to talk about with you guys today. It's something that's a little bit outside of the usual wheelhouse of this channel, but I'm just so excited about it that I really wanted to talk about it with you. And uh, it does have some connection to the space industry and space investing. You will hear Varda Space's name mentioned in here, and there's a lot of potential applications in the space industry. So I wouldn't say that there's any immediate investing opportunities based on this technology if it does potentially prove to be true. But frankly, I think if you're a human and you're interested at all in the future, uh, you have a stake in this. And uh, if it does prove to be true, uh, it's big for you, it's big for me, it's big for everyone. And the future benefits are potentially massive. Of course, I'm talking about the potential discovery of an ambient pressure room temperature superconductor announced by a team of scientists out of South Korea. So before we get into all this and what exactly am I talking about for a lay person, I just want to give you a few disclaimers right off the bat. I'm not a scientist. I don't claim to be a scientist. I'm just an average Joe who's really interested in this kind of stuff like you are hopefully and I've done my best to research this topic thoroughly but there's every chance I'll make a mistake and I don't have as deep an understanding of this topic as some other people out there so I'm sure you can let me know in the comments if I make any mistakes but I do think that this is absolutely massive and I really did want to talk about it hopefully this video will at least give you a high level overview of what's been going on and what everyone is so excited about and talking about so much on Twitter and the internet now, secondly, I want to acknowledge up front that I'm very biased on this topic. I really, really want this to be real and uh, true. So yeah, we always have to acknowledge our biases in these situations and account for them. And uh, that's what I want you to know here. I really do want to live in a future where this material is being mass manufactured and being used for a huge variety of use cases, really making a much brighter future for humanity. Also, I hope you'll consider liking and subscribing if you haven't already. That really helps out the channel, and thank you guys so much for everyone who does that. Okay, so with all that out of the way, let's first dive into the basics. Now, you're obviously watching this video on a computer, laptop, phone, or tablet, and that device is transmitting electricity in the form of electrons inside through a conductor. That conductor could be any kind of metal, copper, aluminum, there, there's tons of different conductors out there. Now, these are not perfect conductors and there is resistance to the flow of electricity in these materials. That resistance causes loss of energy in the form of heat. That's why the device you're watching this on right now is generating heat. Obviously, having energy wasted on heat is less than ideal for basically every electronic device in existence. And not only that, it also causes us to waste even more energy in the form of cooling, whether that's fans, whether that's AC for your server rooms and your data centers, or heat sinks for CPUs and other devices. Even satellites need to use thermal plates and heat exchangers to radiate off excessive heat. Put simply, a superconductor will transmit electricity perfectly with no resistance and no lost energy through heat. We actually already do have some superconductors available to us, but the problem is they need to be cooled to such a crazy low temperature or put under such crazy pressures like being on the bottom of the ocean basically that it really is constrained to some kind of niche use cases where the energy needed for these pressures for these cooling is worth it. Some of these use cases could be like an MRI machine you would have in your hospital, things like that. Uh, definitely not something we would use for everyday devices though. Not only will an ambient pressure room temperature superconductor, <laughs> try saying that five times fast, not only will it transmit energy electricity with no resistance it also has some very extremely very interesting and useful magnetic properties a type 1 superconductor will also expel all magnetic fields from the interior of the object when transitioning to a superconducting state, a phenomenon known as the Meissner effect. Now, I'm not gonna dive too deeply into the technicals here because frankly, I don't understand all of it myself, but just to give you a high level understanding of what's going on, one of the most well-known demonstrations for this effect is you put the superconducting material near a magnet or another device and it will be repelled and will float in the air because it is 
pushing away that magnetic field. Now, if you remember watching the Avatar movies and you saw those floating mountains and like, how the heck are these land masses floating in the air? This makes no sense. The explanation from the filmmakers is that this is the Meisner effect in action, meaning there is a superconducting material inside those rocks that is pushing away from magnetic material on the ground, causing these land masses to float in the air so spectacularly. Another famous sci-fi use case could be floating cars or flying cars floating off the ground. Obviously, if you know about magnetic levitation trains that float just off the ground and are pulled forward by magnetic fields. This could be a massive use case for those as well, something that already exists, but would be much more efficient and much more easier to create with a superconductor. It could also be extremely useful for fusion reactors because they do need to have a magnetic field containing that plasma in the token Mac reactor. So it could potentially allow us to create fusion reactors that require much less energy. If you're familiar at all with fusion, the big problem right now is yes, we can create fusion reactions to create energy, which is what happens on the inside of the sun, but it's always costing us more energy to initiate and sustain these reactions than we're getting out of it, so it's just not worth it. But maybe a superconductor material like this could help out and pave the way for a sustainable fusion energy future. Honestly, the potential use cases for a material like this, if it were real, are absolutely endless. Let me know down in the comments below any other ideas or concepts you've seen for a superconductor material like this. I'm sure there's tons of things out there I haven't even thought about. You know, your electric car being more efficient, using less energy, battery storage lasting for almost forever practically, uh, there's tons and tons of use cases. So with all that background information finally out of the way and we're all on the same page about what this material actually is or what it's claimed to be anyway, let's talk about what recent events have actually occurred to bring this into the limelight. Well, as I said previously, a team of Korean researchers released a paper with an absolutely explosive title called the first room temperature ambient pressure superconductor saying that they had basically uh, discovered it or come up with it. And uh, with a title like that, you get a lot of people just assuming, okay, this is not real. They're just out for attention. They're wa making wild claims. And uh, it was pretty much dismissed by most people right away. Let's take a look at the official reaction most scientists had to this paper. This is bullshit. <laughs> anyway, um, good scientists, even if they don't believe something, they're always going to set to work and attempt to reproduce what the paper says is happening, either proving or disproving it either way, no matter what they may believe. They really want evidence. So they did set to work in terms of trying to reproduce the effect and the process that this paper did claim they had created. So uh, first thing we kind of heard about was a team out of a Chinese university claimed that they had reproduced the LK99 material as it is called, and that they showed this video uh, claiming that they had reproduced the Meisner effect and we can see this little tiny speck being repelled from a magnet which is being held underneath and it's kind of turning as they move it and dropping when they pull it away. Uh, a lot of people still were skeptical about this because it comes from a Chinese university and they thought, you know, this could be attention seeking stuff like that as well. Still a lot of skepticism out there. But then we also had a scientist in Poland publish a picture here claiming that he had also recreated this LK99. And by the way, one of the other crazy things about this paper is just how easy it is to create this substance, which uh, most people found just too good to be true and extremely shocking. Uh, these sources were, again, still met with some skepticism. We really wanted a Western uh, reputable source to reproduce the claims in the paper. And then finally, our old friends at Varda Aerospace. If you remember them, they are currently working with Rocket Lab manufacturing crystals in their space factory that was launched on a photon and uh, is waiting to re-enter Earth's atmosphere right now. A scientist at Varda said that he did replicate this process and published this video result here. Oh boy, there it is. 
You can see it standing up on its side. Okay, now remove the magnet. Now it lays flat. Okay, now put the magnet back in. See it orientate 90 degrees to the field. Okay, John, if you want to come, come and get this real quick. So, standing up. All right, remove it. Lays back down. Standing up again, hold it still. See it's just pinned at, pinned at this angle. It's completely stationary. This is not decaying in any way. We've been observing this for, for an hour now. One other thing we did have was this simulation released from a Berkeley researcher. Uh, Crucially, he says it does not prove or give evidence of superconductivity, but it did show some interesting structural electronic properties that have features in common with superconductors. My plain English interpretation of this is that he ran the simulations, he ran the numbers, and basically, according to the simulation, something interesting is happening here, and we can't rule out superconductivity. Not proving anything, but they can't rule it out, which uh, makes it even more interesting in my books. And one other thing I've also been hearing is that the speed and ease of creating this material is just absolutely remarkable. Normally, in preparing materials like this, you have to have special artisan-trained people people with extensive knowledge and expertise and practical know-how getting the recipe just right and this recipe is just extremely easy to be made with common materials that can be found you know plentifully pretty much everywhere so uh really exciting stuff if it does prove to be true. Now, of course, there has been some pushback on this. You are seeing in these videos, all of these floating little pieces. You tend to see one piece lower than the rest kind of still touching. Uh, the explanation on those, I suppose, is that, you know, it, it's not uniform and the crystals inside, which are super conductive, are, you know, more concentrated in one area than another or something like that. Uh, we do see the one tiny fleck seems to be floating completely. The rest are kind of still touching and there's been some, you know, skepticism around that. Some people saying, well, why don't you just cut it away until it floats? Maybe that's what happened and that's why we just have the one little floating crystal. Uh, maybe it is a little difficult to get a lot of this material out of the process. Nevertheless, I will say, you know, something interesting is clearly happening here, even if this isn't a full-fledged superconductor. Uh, it's definitely interesting, and I think it's definitely increasing our scientific knowledge in terms of materials, and uh, that's always for the good. Some other comments I've heard is that this could be useful in the space industry. Uh, it may be easier, since they're a crystal-based structure, to manufacture this in space, and of course Varda is currently one of the experts on that, manufacturing pharmaceutical crystals on a rocket lab platform in space right now. So maybe they would be well positioned for that if this does turn out to be easier to manufacture in zero G. That would be an absolute boom for the space industry. You can bet there'd be tons and tons of space factories manufacturing the superconductive material in zero G and sending it back down to Earth because it would be so useful and so valuable. Although obviously if that were the case, then we wouldn't be seeing a lot of you know, cheap consumer electronics with that because the the physics and cost of sending materials into space, manufacturing and sending it back down would be a little prohibitive for uses like that, but it could still be extremely useful for, you know, making more specialized machinery a lot cheaper and more effective. So let me know what you think down in the comments below. Is this all a hoax? Is it too good to be true? Could it be real? Of course, I'm really hoping it's real, but uh, still waiting to find more evidence. We're waiting for more thorough write-ups. I think a lot of American and Western laboratories are trying to be a little bit more thorough before they re release their results and findings on this. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you don't mind this video topic being a little bit different than what I'm used to on this channel, but I just found it so interesting that I wanted to make it anyway. I hope you'll consider liking and subscribing if you're a fan of the content, and I will see you in the next video. Bye for now. Yeah.